back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And as promised, this weekend we are going to do a review of the Cato Big Boy. This is with the TCC and sound equipped model. So before we get into the model itself, let's talk about the real big boy. Uh, and it's not like you don't know about it, but in case there's anyone that is curious, uh, this was one of 30, I'm sorry, this is one of 25 um, that were built for the Union Pacific. And uh, this locomotive in real life is 132 feet long and weighed 1.2 million pounds. And in case you were wondering, that is a lot of pounds. This is a huge, absolutely huge locomotive. Um, it is in a 4884 configuration. So for those of you who are new to steam locomotives, that is, it's got four pilot wheels and then two sets of eight drive wheels. And then it's followed by four, um, it's two pair, I guess you'd look at it at trailing and this locomotive um, is one of the ones that I do believe was um, restored it is the one that you're seeing running around um, now on excursions and all that sort of sort of thing um, so it's coal uh, coal fired and uh, it carried uh, 25,000 gallons of water obviously the coal making the fire the water making the steam the steam driving the pistons and and there you go the uh, drive wheels were 68 inch diameters. I guess I should say in this case are 68 inch diameters. Um, and this is just a freaking monster of a locomotive. So let's talk about what all of that equates to um, in the model version of the big boy. Okay, in our end scale versions uh, of this, the Cato big boy, and this is doesn't matter whether you're doing the DC, the DCC, or the DCC in sound. You're getting the same motor functionability, and that is there are two cordless motors um, on this model. It does articulate. It will handle up to an 11-inch radius. Um, I don't have anything that's that's tighter than that um, that, that I can show you. Um, so I. I don't know if it would handle anything tighter. I mean, I would assume that it's not. So if you've got uh, a, a standard tra train set uh, type uh, diameter, which usually is about nine and three quarter inch, um, it, it's not going to handle that that radius. Um, so uh, before you purchase, make sure you don't have uh, anything um, smaller than 11 inch radius. Um, and, and I think I may have said diameter there a couple times. Um, diameter is, you know, that's, that's the full circle, right? So, uh, 11 inch radius, 22 inch, you know, diameter. That is the curvature that, that this thing is going to handle. So if you're any tighter than that, um, not, not going to function. Um, it has all the wheels driving except, you know, your tender obviously, uh, and your, um, your, your trailing and pilot uh, wheel sets. So a lot of driving action on here. Uh, and you've got two motors, you know, pulling this thing. So it has capacity. Um, so that's that's a nice feature. Obviously, I went with the DCC and sound already equipped. If you had the DC only version came out um, early in, in 23, I think it was around the midpoint of the year. And, you know, it was available and it looked cool. You could see it at just about any train show that you went to. Somebody inevitably was running this thing. Uh, and a lot of folks were trying to upgrade it to DCC on their own. And there are blogs and YouTube videos. Apparently, this thing is a mess inside as far as putting things together and trying to make it DCC compatible. Uh, so if you were one of those goofballs that likes doing your own DCC, uh, this might not be the model to, to, to try. Uh, based on what I've seen, there are some people that have been able to do it. Um, but it didn't look like anybody was having fun. So uh, word, of, word of, the ca uh, of caution there, if you're going to try to do it yourself, you are in for a bit, of a bit of a mess trying to get this thing. And I'm guessing it's probably got something to do with how much pickup there is. 
All of the wheels are picking up, uh, and that includes the wheels on the tender are also picking up power to get you uh, continuous sound and to get you um, power to those two uh, cordless motors inside. So a lot, lot going on here. Um, I will tell you, I know my track is far from perfect, even though it is the Cato unit track. Um, so when you are, um, when you are riding this thing around, uh, it seems to ride fairly well over minor imperfections in the track. Um, and that was a concern for me with the size of it. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you, did not seem to have any issue, uh, negotiating the layout in the last week, um, between the teaser video and, you know, where we are today doing the actual review of the model. So, um, without further ado, let's get in, let's look at some of the details on the model, and then, of course, let's take it around the layout. Okay, it seems like the front is the logical place to start. When you take this locomotive out of the box, you will notice that the front pilot does not have a coupler on it. Um, they give you two options, one with the coupler and one without the coupler. So it depends on how you want to run this and, and what configuration you want to put it. Um, for me, this locomotive is going to pretty much be in mainline service because, well, I don't know what else you would do with a locomotive this size. Um, so it is going to pull some ridiculous trains. Uh, yes, it's going to pull some Amtrak trains and, and some intermodal trains and some coal trains. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pull everything uh, around the layout. And uh, in doing that, uh, it's probably going to be helpful for me to have that front coupler on just in case I need to um, add helper service or, you know, pull a cut of cars out of a yard. I don't know, but I wanted the coupler on the front. So uh, it is a du uh, dummy coupler uh, when you put it on the front. So just be beware of that. Um, I wish it was a fully functioning coupler, um, it's, but it's not. So... Um, you know, that's, that's a little disappointing, but I think if I needed to make a change, I probably could. I'm just not, we're going to let it go for now. Um, it is a little tricky getting it, it on because all of these parts down here articulate so much so that this locomotive can move that, uh, there's real no good place to hold on to. It's not fragile, but there are instructions that come with it and how to do it. Just follow those instructions. Make sure your locomotive is sitting and a foam cradle, and you shouldn't have any problem. Okay, so let's take a look at the front pilot detail. And this is a Cato locomotive, and I always put Cato in the sort of mid-tier um, line as far as details go. They're not, they're not crazy detailed, but they're not... I'm trying to show you the chalk marking. It says Big Boy on the front there. They did add that, which is a real nice touch. Uh, you're going to have to see it in some other shots because it seems like the glare from the light is just bleaching it out. But uh, this model, they have done an exceptional job with. It's just very, very nicely detailed. And you could argue that some of these could be, um, you know, etched metal parts, I guess. And sure, that would add a whole nother component to it. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm already afraid to touch this thing. Um, it's kind of like a scale trains locomotive in that regards. There's just there's a lot of separately applied pieces, and they all move. And there's just there actually is handling instructions with the model telling you how to pick this thing up, um, just because of how much movement and articulation there is on it so it's just it's it's complicated um the tender and the locomotive are permanently joined there is a connection right there that you can see and those wires down below feed your power from the uh, car back into the locomotive and into the motor so um, there is a wire it's nicely concealed in there everything looks legitimate and you don't see any sort of brass contacts or spare wires or anything that uh you know is typical on on a model locomotive you just don't everything is nicely concealed 
I'm gonna take you along the top here, show you all these separately applied rails and grabs. You can see all the rivet detail. And if you had spent a little bit of time doing some light weathering on this thing, man, you could really make those details pop. Um, it's probably going to be a while before I get to that. Uh, at some point in time, I will. But for right now, we're just going to uh, we're going to leave her quote unquote factory new. Okay, uh, I want to do a nice close up. I want you to just watch here as everything moves. So you can see just like the real thing, all of your pistons for driving all function. And of course your decoder is linked to the speed of the locomotive as you pretty much have come to expect with the modern locomotives. Alright, so let's talk about sound. This does not come with a sound card. Uh, but if you go online, you can find all of the various sounds um, that, that it has available for all of the functions. Um, and you can go in and play with those. I'm going to play for you the, uh, the two obvious. So let's look at the bell. And then, of course, the horn. Okay, so for me, I am not a steam locomotive person. Uh, I've All of my models have always been in the modern era. I love big modern diesels. So you may find yourself wondering what would possess you to buy a steam locomotive that doesn't really fit anything on your layout. And certainly Union Pacific is not what you model. So what gives? Um, there is whether it's history or what, there is just something about this locomotive um, that is absolutely fantastic. And maybe it's the size of the locomotive that, that draws me to it. The, the pure uh, ingenuity behind how this thing actually operated. Um, but this is just a phenomenal piece of equipment. Um, and to own it in small scale is, is pretty cool. So. This is probably the only steam locomotive I will ever purchase uh, because steam's, you know, not really my thing. Um, but I absolutely love this locomotive. And to be honest with you, having never purchased a steam locomotive, I didn't really know what to expect. And I didn't know what the, you know, what the details would be like, what the running would be like, you know. And, and certainly with the size of this thing, I didn't know how it would handle on the layout. And it seems like every time I introduce a new locomotive to the layout, I find some new problem with my layout that I didn't know I had. So let's, just for just for comparison's sake here, um, let me grab a Kato SD40-2 uh, that I have sitting up here. And let me show you, size comparison-wise, what this looks like. And so if I line up coupler to coupler in the front, eh, it's just kind of cheating because this thing has a lot of pilot but just take a look at the size difference you know I mean here let's 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 bring the second one in you know so this locomotive plus the tender is is roughly equivalent to two SD40-2s I mean just it's freaking huge so it's cool right I mean like you gotta you gotta be at all in the size all right Let's get this thing running, let's go take a look at it, and let's figure out what the most ridiculous modern set of consist I can put behind this thing and see what the locomotive will pull. Okay, so this is the stress test for the big boy, and its ridiculous cargo is 10 road railers. And the re reason it's ridiculous, yes, the Union Pacific did experiment with road railers, never really caught on. And so, not really something you would see on a Union Pacific line. And definitely would not watch behind a big boy. So we've got 10 cars. That's one set of road railers. 
about the climb, the steepest grade I have on the layout. Mind you, no diesel locomotive that I have right now with DCC and sound can handle this grade with 10 cars. Um, so that's your that's your starting point. And if you're curious, I am at 14% throttle. And I, I gotta be honest with you, I, I don't even think she broke a sweat. So that is top of the grade. Ten cars, not gonna stop this. And uh, I was gonna add it in multiples of two, but I think I'm gonna add five more and see what happens. Okay, we are up to 16 cars. For a little bit of reference, my longest train is 22 cars with three locomotives on it. So we are running 16, single locomotive, 14% throttle, and let's see what she does. Okay. Oh, and she stopped at 16. I think she might be off the tracks. Let's go take a look. Okay, she was not off the tracks. That 16 is where she where she stalled out. And uh, I'm making sure that I don't have a derailment or something that would have added. Nope, that was the... It's too heavy. It looks like she's completely on the track. So let's... Uh, no, wait a minute. She's pulling again. Hold on a second. You know, I think we might have to have a do over there because I didn't really assist her and she all of a sudden started pulling again. I might have had something off the tracks. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to do 16 take two. Okay, this is a 16 car big boy take two. And we're gonna watch her here to make sure we don't get anything off the rails because that's eh, kind of cheating. She gotta have all her driving wheels and all the cars gotta be on, otherwise that's just not gonna not gonna be a fair test. Yeah, she definitely stalled on the on the hump. You can see the drive wheels are spinning there, but she's, I mean, she's just barely. I think she's actually getting stuck. I don't, I don't think it's a pulling power issue. I think she was getting stuck there because she pulls the rest of the train up. So uh, I think that might be a track work problem as opposed to a, uh, 
as opposed to a locomotive problem. It just seems like she's getting stuck on this bump, so... All right, let's... Okay, so that is the Cato Big Boy with DCC and sound installed. 
It is an impressive locomotive, both in real life and in model form. And I'm happy that I waited for the uh, sound version to come out and don't have to mess with the DCC stuff. If that's for you, then enjoy, but uh, I'd rather just get it ready to rock and roll. And that's what I did. So, uh, very powerful locomotive, a lot of fun to run. Don't forget, it does require at least 11 inch radius to run properly. So, don't uh, make sure you got the right track accommodations for it because it is big. Um, 2SD40 2 worth, anyway. Uh, it is going to set you back a pretty penny. So, uh, Valentine's Day is around the corner. And find out how much your wife or girlfriend loves you. Because nothing says love like purchasing the uh, big boy with sound for you. And you can tell if your love is worth retail price of $599. Yes, that's $599 is the suggested retail price. You probably won't pay that um, unless somebody dupes you. Um, you're going to find it somewhere around the neighborhood of 479 or so. Still a hefty price tag for a locomotive. Um, it's definitely the priciest locomotive I've purchased and probably will ever purchase. But uh, I'll tell you what, guys, this, uh, this gets a hell of a rating from me. Um, it, is, it, it is every bit of um, 9 out of 10. The only reason I can't give it the full 10 is there are some parts on here that I think could be um, etched parts that are not. And there's some molded details on here that probably could have been separately applied and are not. But otherwise, this is a fantastic model. Kato really knocked it out of the park. And um, if you're, if, if you're going to model the modern era and have it as an excursion train, that's that works. If you're going to model back in its heyday um you know that'll be fun too or if you're going to be like me and you're just going to put as many ridiculous contests as you can behind it and run it um you know that's awesome too but uh it's a lot of fun and i highly recommend this it's another great offering from Cato. it is a smooth runner it is a powerful runner and it looks and sounds awesome